Gary Franchi here for the Reality Report. Uh, it's about 11.29 right now, Sunday night. Uh, we've been working on this story all day. We've been uploading files, uh, getting stories and testimonies from students. Uh, the breaking story right now, besides the fact that Osama bin Laden uh, has just been pronounced dead by uh, our president, uh, President Barack Obama, uh, we're going to be talking with Julio Raceo. He's an investigative journalist. Uh, he's also a student at Western Illinois University. He was an eyewitness also to a uh, tyranny that unveiled uh, right before his eyes uh, at the school. Julio, welcome to the show. Uh, let's talk about this. The uh, students were they were blown off steam, and they were attacked by the police G20 style at the oh. annual Wheeler Block Party. This is a an annual event. Students have been carrying this on for years and now uh, for the first time they the police have come out in full SWAT riot gear and with sound cannons yeah it was uh, Gary thank you so much first off for uh, allowing me to be on here and uh, getting the getting the story out there uh, it, it it was uh, pretty crazy to see what what took place Saturday afternoon just yesterday uh, at Western uh, you know Get backdrop on the Wheeler Block Party annual event each year. It's you know the week you know before you know dead week and then finals approach. Just an end of the year celebration, and um, this uh, yesterday was and right now. We're just we we are showing footage right now as you're speaking. Okay, the, yesterday afternoon it was just absolutely crazy. I couldn't believe what was going on. It was a peaceful event throughout the day. You know, cops were just trying to maintain the peace, keep people off the streets without open containers. But around 6 o'clock at night, uh, cops leave for about 30 minutes. And then, you know, we see some students, you know, get a little out of hand, no cops in the vicinity at all, until I noticed several cops, uh, several police officers just hanging on the middle of Wheeler Street, allowing students uh, several students, not all students, maybe about a group of three or four, and then a group of students came in to watch, but literally saw these students, you know, put a bicycle on top of a uh, uh, of a stop sign and just, you know, allowing it to happen, not making any arrest. And then here come riot gear officers uh, from the, uh, it was a, an Illinois uh, police agency with the Department of Homeland Security out there, Macomb police officers, McDonough County sheriffs, and the Illinois State Police were all out with mace, uh, dogs, they were tear gassing and macing students for no particular reason. I had a friend who was tear gassed outside of her apartment just sitting. Um, it was out of control. Officers were tackling students. Um, I was threatened uh, for, for filming. I, an officer told me um, I was infringing on their on their jobs, uh, eavesdropping law or something like that. So they were threatening me and other activists. And, out you're, there and, you're, filming. and you're a broadcast student, so you obviously yeah. have, uh, you know, the media, the media credentialed ability to be there and to record exactly. and document and, and to get the testimony of students. Uh, now we know that th they were lining up, using their standard uh, tactics for. Um, crowd suppression, but these people right. were clearly, uh, they were in their yards, they were in their yeah. yards, in their properties, and the footage that we've also seen is that the, uh, the footage that we've also seen is that they were uh, trying to uh, get the students to come out of their homes. Right, right. I want to read to you. This is the uh, United States Constitution. I'm a member of uh, Young Americans for Liberty at Western Illinois University, a great group of uh, young activists. Fourth Amendment, uh, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and practically describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. What I saw yesterday afternoon was a clear violation of the students' Fourth Amendment rights. Uh, cops were literally tear gassing people on their front porches. Uh, uh, officers were forcing people to leave their homes. Uh, hopefully you show a video of officers trying to get people out of their homes. And thank goodness some person knew their rights and uh, said, you know, they don't have a right to come in here. They don't have a warrant. 
So clearly our rights were violated yesterday afternoon. No no student posed a threat. No weapons were at uh, at the block party. It was just a peaceful gathering. And really things didn't go things didn't get out of hand until the riot gear and the mace started appearing. So so in standard fashion, the police show up with their intimidation tactics and the temperature's obviously gonna get it's going to flare up because now you see I mean we, we the footage we're showing uh, the LRAD cannons uh, the, 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 the announcement on the, on the airwaves it just sounded just like what they were playing at the G20. Uh, disperse, we're going to use uh, tear gas if you do not disperse. Um, this is tyranny in the heartland. Now, of course, you, you were... Man, it's so late, dude. I'm, I'm so burned out. It's okay, Gary. It's all right. The, um, the media interviewed you, and they're already starting to take, obviously, the side of the state, uh, the side of the, of the administration of the school, uh, but there's no mention of the constitutional abuses. Absolutely none at all. I mean, Macomb, Illinois, for those that don't know, is a town of about 20,000 people, maybe 21,000. I haven't seen the new census numbers. But practically around 11 to 13,000 of the residents are students. We're a taxpayer. We pay, you know, we, we, we basically run this city. If it wasn't for us, a lot of people wouldn't have jobs in this town. We're not bragging or anything, but this is just the severity of this town. Unfortunately, there's no jobs here or no, or no market. And to see a sound can and see LRAD weapons. Let's get that footage and on the screen there. Okay. Just okay. To describe it, I was right. I had to get this footage. I've seen, you know, police state for the rise of FEMA. I saw what happened in the G20 in Toronto and Pittsburgh and London, all over the world. I I knew this weapon was used in Iraq and Afghanistan. They kill our eardrums, and to see it in Macomb, Illinois, was completely unnecessary. I I had I couldn't sleep last night. I thought I was, you know, hearing this. LRAD in my sleep last night. This thing was very dangerous. I saw officers, literally folks, literally, point LRAD, the LRAD weapon at apartment complexes. I was on the balcony. I, I saw it with my own two eyes. So the question in my eyes is why was this weapon used at a peaceful end of the year gather, gathering? It was completely unnecessary. And on what you're talking about with the news, um, already McDonough County Police, there was a story in Peoria, Illinois, uh, that came out Saturday night, just a quick little blurb, and the McDonough County Sheriff spokesperson said they had to control a riot. Uh, that's why the uh, riot officers were, were used. Uh, well, let me give you some facts, folks. Throughout the week, our president at Western, Alfred Goldfarb, uh, sent out a mass email, took out a page article in our school paper, the Western Courier, talking about how there'll be an increase of police security. Uh, my friend emailed the president asking him, because there are rumors that turn into confirmations and facts from students who have family members who are law enforcement agents, admitting that there will be riot gear officers. So this was Tuesday, Wednesday, sent an email out Wednesday night. We get a response Thursday saying that they won't reveal police tactics. So I knew in the back of my head, this was gonna happen. Standard operating procedures as in the G20, Pittsburgh and Toronto, they let a certain event take place. And we have footage of officers literally standing feet away from stopping this mess. They let it happen to bring out the riot gear. And I mean, you said it, Gary, we're a bunch of 20 something kids. Testosterone is riding. I mean, when, when, when people see this, not just in a college campus, but anywhere for that matter, uh, the survival mode kicks in. And these cops literally were intimidating us. I was getting intimidated by officers, but you know, I, I, I knew their standard operating procedures, so I wasn't afraid of them. Well, Julio, uh, hats off to you for uh, getting us the story. We're going to get it out to the people. And of course, thank you for, uh, again, working with us throughout the day to bring justice to this unconstitutional abuse. Yeah, uh, can, I, can I say one last Go thing, Gary? Yeah, uh, I just hope anyone who's watching, please get this story out there. The the university and the police officers are going to spin it that we were reckless and crazy. As you can see behind me, that's the Gadsden flag. Uh, your film, Gary, Don't Tread on Me, inspired me to uh, look into state's rights. My rights were, were fringe. I felt I wasn't a citizen yesterday afternoon. I, I'm going to get Oath Keepers. I want to talk to them. I want to talk to to anyone who's a constitutional lover. I mean, the youth's freedom were infringed, and it goes to show you that not many youths uh, care for authority figures like uh, like a Barry Satoro in Washington. Thank you so much, Gary, for your help. All right, Julio, once again, thank you so much for joining us on this very late edition of the Breaking Story.
of the constitutional abuses and the police riot tactics taking place earlier today at Western Illinois University.